This is one of my old favourites here. Solarian 2 was released to much hype in 1988, as it was one of the first colour Macintosh games. I myself played the death out of it. I think the only shareware game that I played more than this was Munchies. So to me, this is the definition of nostalgia. We are currently staring at the main menu. To start a game, we simply click the mouse. You could liken the concept to Space Invaders or Galaxian. However, what sets Solarian apart is the variety in things that you are trying to kill. There are six different classes of hostiles that you are trying to blow to bits. Within this swarm, they all have their own roles and they all have their own behavioural patterns. Currently flying down the screen at the moment is a blue bottle, although it looks more like a thistle. These are classed as strafers and are not as dangerous as divers. There's an example. Divers like that kamikaze arrow will home in on you, although can be stopped in mid-flight. The role of cannon fodder is taken up by the birds, while at the heart of the swarm are the swarm leaders, in this case the glowing orbs. These things tend to shoot directly at you, which is highly unpleasant, and are usually protected from direct fire from bodyguards. Yes. Finally, we have the nastiest class of all, the sweeps. That pentagon there was one missing me completely. You can dodge them, but it's much better practice to kill them first, or else that will happen a lot. The goal I set myself in this game is to simply get as high a score as possible. The sooner you complete the level, the more bonus you will have at the end of it. This can be enhanced by shooting the multiplier prize. I just shot the challenge round prize there, that little thing that looked like a medal. Prizes don't hang around forever. If you miss it, tough. The opportunity to enter a challenge round will show up on every other level. They are basically a quick fire round and they don't have any sound. I am rubbish at them. If you manage to get 100% in a challenge round, you get to choose a power up. I only know this from watching someone else do it. Even without getting 100%, it's generally a nice boost of points. And combined with the end of level bonus score and multiplier, it will give you some big numbers. I've just tripled my score there. Level 5 and the cast has changed. One key observation I'd like to make here is that it looks a lot slower, uh, having watched this on a video now, than it actually feels while playing. I think this more or less illustrates the confusion of this particular level. You're not used to what you're shooting at because you spent so long on the levels underneath it trying to get good enough to get here. Yes. This, for me, is where my concentration shifts from trying to shoot everything in a strategic manner to just simply shooting and trying to dodge everything that starts flying at me. The game gets frantic as the difficulty skyrockets. Stage 10 and it's all change again. Of particular irritants are the sweeps of this level, which are red spikes. There they are dancing around and you can't go anywhere near them because you don't know which direction they're going to fly. Unlike the pentagons in the first few levels, which disappear once they have spent themselves, these ones reappear, which is lovely. You have to shoot them, and you often don't get in the position to be able to do so because there's so many projectiles flying directly underneath from everything else. And while that sounds like a complaint, it isn't. This is obviously a later level, so the challenge is suitable. Also worth a mention are the supply ships. Here's one. It's a biplane in space. <coughs> A belching biplane in space. Giving the falling present your undivided attention will frequently lead to death. And some don't even bother coming down. In the first two levels you have the stalk, which drops the item without needing to be shot, which is nice. The presents are colour coded. If you figure out what the colours are, which I've never done, you'll know just what they contain. In summary, I consider Solarian 2 timeless. The gameplay is solid. The sounds are fun and quirky, there's no music but it doesn't really need it, and the graphics suit and surpass 1988. To play it, you will need an old Mac. While there was a port to OS X, that itself is also outdated and will not run on I think it's Snow Leopard and above. But if you do have the means to play this, by all means do. It's one of those games where you can spend as little or as much time in one sitting as you like. So, brew a cup of tea and set aside 20 minutes. It'll be 20 minutes well spent.